Hi. <laughs> Hello. How is everybody doing? I actually am trying to pull up this one thing that I had. <laughs> And I closed it, but I wanted to read something in front of it, so I had to open it real fast. So, hello. Okay, listen. I know that the title is like, what? But I, once you hear the thing, I was like, I didn't really know, I, I didn't know what to put it as, you know what I mean? But anyway, that's what, that's what I'm calling it. So, clickbait? Meh. No. Creative titling? Yes. All right, so listen, I've got my peach tea in here today instead of green tea. It's good. The peach tea in here is really good. I also have my coffee from this afternoon. And my sweet water. I've got water in here with like, you know, a little no calorie juicy stuff that's got like vitamin B's and whatever. So I've got like three options here. I've just got a plethora of decisions I could make depending on my mood. Anyway, <laughs> I know you're like, thank you. You're welcome. So. Um, let me find the thing I wanted to read. Um, but today's, today's thing, I had, I don't know if you remember, you may not, but I skipped X. Look, hold on. In the faith files, just so that we remember where we're at. Okay, look. You see this little section right here that I highlighted in like orange? This is X, okay? And I skipped X. I, I've got my, all the, the different verses for the faith files. And anyway, I have a color coding system. Don't you worry about it. But this right here were all of the X ones. And I was like, I'm going to skip that. But today I decided to go back to it. And you know what happens right? You know what happens the second I get on to do my video. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. I'm going to minimize this for a second. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen. <laughs> hey, oh my God. It's, it's funny because it's so, <laughs> I mean, it's not even like subtle. You're like, really? See, you got me the first few times over the last few weeks because I was straight out of my mind, stressed out. See, I know your tactics now and I've got my medicine fixed. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, moving on. Let me go to the verse I wanted to show you. Don't go anywhere. Because this is Acts 14, verse 27 is the verse, right? And uh, let's see. Mm. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll find it. Don't worry. So listen. Okay. I'm going to read to you the verse, but I'm going to tell you what's happening in the thing. Okay. I know that these go on for a really long time. I try to make it faster, but you know what? I'm just going to have to put them on, on like YouTube under the podcast section where people actually want to listen for like 20 minutes <laughs> because I don't know if people actually listen to the full amount of my, the thing, except for like my mom and dad, but it's just, there's a lot of good stuff and I try to get it all, doo -doo 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 -doo. but anyway, it doesn't matter. So this is the verse. The verse is 1427, and here's what it says, and this won't make sense until I explain. It says, and when they had arrived and gathered the church together, they began to report all things that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. Now, this, this is actually what's actually happened, okay, in, in chapter 14. So 
Paul and Barnabas are on like their first like missionary journey, right? And they're going to all these places, okay? Places I can't necessarily pronounce. And over the course of their journey, God opens the doors to like presenting the gospel to the Gentiles. Um, they have difficult travel. They have confrontation with this one guy. Um, John Mark quits the group. Um, they uh, were driven out of different cities, um, Iconium and Antioch, right? And all this stuff happens. They were, they were preaching the gospel and they, they, healed this one guy. Um, Paul has this moment with him where he sees that when he's preaching the gospel, this guy has this, receives faith. He, he, you know, he receives faith in Jesus because he has this moment where they, where they connect and God gives Paul discernment and he tells the man to stand up, to stand up. The guy had been, been crippled from like birth. So all this stuff happens. So now here's the thing. They're in, they're in this city and they're preaching the gospel. They heal this guy. Oh, oh, wait. They just, they get driven out of Antioch in this other place, right? Driven out. Like their people either accepted Christ or they were furious, right? They were like mad about what they were saying. So they get driven out. They get this heads up that they're going to get stoned. So they escape. And when they escape, they go to Lystra or they go to this place and they're Lyconian, like, like, I don't know, it doesn't matter. They're preaching the gospel to these people. And it's in that city that they heal that man. Well, in that city, they have a lot of, they believed in Zeus and Hermes and all those gods. And so in their culture, it was not abnormal for the gods to come down in human form, right? And so when they healed that man, sorry, allergies, when they healed that man, they start, they didn't even receive the word about Jesus and any of the stuff they, you know, it was like it fell on deaf ears. So when they healed that man, they thought that Paul and Barnabas were Zeus and Hermes. And so Paul and Barnabas didn't really speak their language, so they didn't understand necessarily all the stuff that was happening when they, they just thought they were preparing, like, to have a celebration, like, yay, you know, you're here, you're talking about Jesus, yay, whatever, until the priest of the Zeus temple brought oxen and things down to prepare a sacrifice, for Paul and Barnabas. And then they realized that they were trying to praise them as gods. So they tore their clothes, which was common for like blasphemy, like, oh my God, you know. And they went down into, and to show them that they were like them, that they were human. And they were like, we're human. We're just like you. We are not gods. And you, you need to turn from the vain idols and these dead gods. These gods are dead. They are nothing. And turn to the living God that created heaven and earth and the sea and all the creatures in it. And so they turn to not the Old Testament like they would have done in the Jewish culture to be like these these prophecies and these things were written about Jesus in the Old Testament. And this is, that would be something that the Jews would understand. But in this culture, they don't understand any of that. So they bring about the story of Jesus and then they bring about nature, creation. God brought you rain and fruit and all these different things. It is the living one true God and you need to repent and turn from your ways from these dead gods. They don't mean anything. Okay, so the people from Ant you better not the people from Antioch that driven that drove them out of the city, right? Before they got to this place, they followed them. And when they got there, they started turning the crowd against Paul and Barnabas. After they had done the miracle and all the stuff, they started turning the crowd against them and they stoned Paul. Now, here's the thing. Stoning is a, an effective way to execute someone. So they stoned him, dragged him out of the city for like the dogs and the beasts and stuff, ex 
thinking he was dead. Some commentaries, some commentators believe that he actually died because he had visions of things that he wrote about in like second Corinthians. And they think that some of these things happened that he actually died and that he was raised again. So there's some, some projection about that because he didn't die. Right. And then God raises him or he gets raised from whatever. Now here's the thing. This, this is the thing. So just follow me through, follow me through. He gets stoned after he did that miracle and he gets up and then they go with the disciples or the people, Barnabas and whoever else was with them. And he goes right back into the same city of the people that stoned him and dragged him out of the city. He went right back into the city. Now in that city, Timothy is where he gathers Timothy. So maybe Timothy saw that happen and whatever. And so he goes right back into the city. And then the next day he gets up and travels. Listen, if my back has a kink in it, I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He got stoned, got up, he probably died and God raised him. And, and they even say that during this, he wrote about how he was part of the first martyr, which was Stephen or Stephen. And he was the first martyr for the gospel of Jesus. And Paul was a part of that execution. And so anyway, he's thinking about all these things. He goes back into the city and I'm like, Ooh, he stays there for a day. The next day, they get up and they head back to Antioch, the place that drove him out, that followed him, that turned these people against him. He went back to Antioch, to the church there. Anyway, it's like I can't wrap my mind around that kind of passion and drive and sense of urgency. Like, I can't wrap my mind around it, right? So they go back to Antioch and... And over the course of this time, it Luke Luke is the author of Acts. So Luke is talking about how they raise up leaders in a matter of weeks. Like they're not there for long, but they are like, we're in, we're doing it, raising up leaders and we're encouraging you in the word. And then we are, we're going to go and then you're going to raise that church. And in today's culture, like, that's not the thing. It's like, we're going to spend years with you and make, I don't even know, you know, not that that's bad. I'm just saying it's God's church. It's, it's God's church. He, it's like they did, they encourage, strengthen, train, and then they left and they're like, okay, go <laughs> lead. Let's do it. You know what I mean? And uh, that was neat too. So anyway, let me read you some of the stuff I wrote. So listen, I was reading some commentary. They went back into the city. I can't even, I can't even like they got, he got stoned to death or whatever, close to death. And then he went back into the same city. It's unbelievable. So, um, here's what one of the commentator thingies said. What will it take for you to back down from doing God's will? What kind of temptation or obstacle or opposition will do it? And I was like, Oh, <laughs> I mean, what will it take for you to back down from doing God's will? I, I was like, they were driven out of cities. They were stoned and they were relentless. And at the end of that chapter, in when they went to Antioch and they were at the church again and um, being ministered by the people at the church and everything, they probably stayed there a while it was like they were talking about all of the amazing, wonderful things that God had done in opening the door of the word of the gospel to the Gentiles and different things. That's how it ended the chapter. And I was like, the travel was hard. John Mark quit. They had a confrontation with some dude in Cyrus or Cyrus. Paul was stoned. They were mistaken for gods and there was temptation physical problems and they were relentless and talking about how, how great right and I just thought you know, and then this is really the last the verse that I was like oh my gosh the verse said here's what it said 
he told them that um, they had to go through many trials. What verse is it? Hold on. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Where's the verse? It says, um, he was stoned, disciples returned. Oh, here we go. Verse 21 or 22. Here we go. Um, 22. There it is. Strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying, this is what Paul and them are saying, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. And the, the commentation said, um, this was the message that helped strengthen and exhort the disciples. Um, this was a simple message proved in Paul's own personal experience, you know, and Paul could preach that message cause, cause he'd lived it. You know what I mean? And it, then it says, this is, this is for many, a, a forgotten message today. They consider any kind of tribulation complete, completely counterproductive to Christian living, failing to note the significant place suffering has in God's plan. That like stuck me because I cannot begin to tell you how many sermons, messages and memes and whatever and all the stuff, all the stuff about training and um, motivation and how to avoid suffering. This is how this is this is how you can avoid suffering. Do this and do that and all the things. Now, don't get me wrong. I I, I want to avoid suffering, <laughs> but. In that verse, when it said we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God, when Paul said that, it was like, I just reflected on their first missionary journey, all the stuff, Paul being stoned and all the things in the future, shipwrecks and being imprisoned and beheaded, like all of the things. And today, somehow... We have gotten so spiritually fat on motivation and all of the sugar, sugar, because God is love. Do not get me wrong, but Jesus suffered. The, the disciples died, except for John, for their faith. They were martyred. They suffered horribly. And today we look at suffering as totally counterproductive to our Christian faith and we're being attacked by the enemy, which sometimes, don't get me wrong, maybe we are, for sure. We don't have a good, very good relationship with suffering. Do you know what I'm saying? And I thought, you know what? It is, it is through, me, it, God says, you're gonna, in this world, you're gonna have trials and tribulations, but take heart because I've overcome the world, right? But he even warns us. And Somehow today, don't I don't want to suffer, but we get so panicked about it that we miss all of the significant things that God has in, in mind for our suffering. The lessons, the strength, the preparation, getting stronger in your faith muscle so you can do battle. Like, we just do the motivation. We learn the tips and tricks. Here's the example. Listen, if you tell me that I'm going to be queasy or nauseous in any capacity, I have every single trick. I'm not kidding. I know all of them because I would rather chew broken glass <laughs> than be nauseous. I would rather you tell me I'm going to be in physical pain than be queasy. I, I mean... I am not a good, nauseous person. I will chew gum. I will do the pressure points. I will put ice on my chest and on the back of my neck. I will do all of the things. I have all the things. I don't want to suffer. Here's the thing. That is how we act about any kind of suffering in our Christian life. Here's this trip, uh, trick. Here's this tip. And you've got to do this. And um, maybe this is the issue. And then you've got to... Now, all of those things have their place. Please hear me. 
there's a prayer in the Old Testament that I pray, Lord, keep me from all trouble and pain, <laughs> you know, and I pray it. But I, there has to be something in the maturing of your faith that stops just getting fat on all of the goodies and starts feeding other people. Because I think part of our suffering is that internal focus. It's all me. It's all me. I'm just, I'm unhappy. I'm stressed out. This isn't going right. This is bad. This is right. And our focus is so internal. And this, all, what else can I read? What other, you know, motivational thing can I do? Don't get me wrong. I listen to God things and all that stuff all day. But I have, I have learned, and no, I'm not there, <laughs> That sometimes you can sit in the suffering. Sometimes you just sometimes you just gotta sit in the suffering. And you can cry your way through it, and you can you can yell and scream out at the Lord, which I have done. You can cry and read your verses and just just keep going. Just sometimes you gotta sit in the suffering and be like God is God. I, I don't have to feel it. It just is the truth. And there were plenty of times over the last few weeks that I was like, here is the truth. I don't feel it in my gut. I don't feel it in my spirit. I don't feel it in my heart. But here's what the Bible says is true. So, and sometimes I was like, so, okay, I guess this is this. I get all sarcastic and smarmy like to the Lord. <laughs> oh, he's so good to me that he doesn't just strike me down. But I mean, like... Sometimes you just have to speak the truth regardless of how you feel. Ask God to reveal why you're suffering. Learn the things you're supposed to learn and realize that there is a plan and purpose and significance in your suffering. Your Christian life is not less than or bad because you're suffering. Somehow, and maybe it's just Western culture, <coughs> somehow Christians have decided that suffering is a sign of like walking away from God or something's bad. But I mean, the disciples suffered terribly. Jesus suffered the most. And suffering is not a determining factor for the f your walk with the Lord. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know how to explain that, but does that make sense? <coughs> the other thing that I thought was really interesting was... The other thing I thought was really interesting was that they didn't really spend a lot of time. There's this sense of urgency. It's like, I'm here. I'm preaching the word of God. Um, they're, sorry, they're setting up churches. They're setting up leaders. They're training them. They're like, okay, now go. That's the other thing. We wait for things to be perfect. I need to be perfect. I need to stop being so weak. I need for my suffering to end. I need for my relationship to be right. I need for my job to be good. I need to lose 50 pounds. I need to write. We, we, like you go through all this stuff and you're, you don't, you don't go, you don't go. You're afraid, whatever the issue is, you listen to other people that you shouldn't listen to. You compare your life with people you should not compare your life to. And we don't go. Somehow we're waiting for the perfect thing. And it's like, okay, so there's like this neon sign and God comes down like an angel uh, of the Lord comes down like he did with Hannah, like he did with Mary, you know, and different people. Hi, Holly, here's the thing. Thus saith the Lord of, you know, and this is what you're going to do. That's not necessarily how it works for me. <laughs> I mean, that's not to say it doesn't happen like that because there are people that have had dreams where Jesus has come to them in like Muslim countries. They've never even heard the gospel. And they're like, I got saved because I had a dream and Jesus came and talked to me. I mean, amazing, right? What I'm saying is, what am I trying to tell you? 
this is where I need an audience that responds to me and says, uh, like Jack Hibbs, this is where you were. <laughs> anyway, this is where you were. Don't get lost. Um, I don't know what I was trying to tell you. Anyways. Oh, you're waiting for the perfect thing, right? But my point is, we spend all this time ingesting and not acting because we're really afraid. We're afraid we're going to fail. We're afraid others might reject us. We're afraid they might not like what we have to say. And we're afraid of whatever it is. And so we use whatever excuses to not just act. And in the, in this chapter 14, it was like you they were training and they were going. They were this. They were raising up. Okay, now go. Now go. That's what I feel like. Like. Like, go, just, just go, do it, do it bad. You're upset. Like the other day, like a couple weeks ago when I did my video and I just weeped my way through it. Like, I don't even care. You know what I mean? Like, I just, that's, that's part of the thing I resonated with this where it's like, don't just get spiritually chunky. You know, you, you got to give that out. You don't wait for your suffering to end before you act on the purposes that God has for you because you're going to just go to meet him one day. You're going to be teethless and 80 years old. And he's going to be like, Hey, I was trying to push you like, you know, 50 years ago. I mean, I love you so much. Welcome home, baby. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, don't wait for your suffering to end, to do the things that God's called you to do. Like, like in Paul and Barnabas, just train, go act, do it bad. Just go. And I really, really liked that. Okay, that's, that's the last of all I have to say, but I just want to give you a little tiny little thing. So remember, if you watched my thing just a few weeks ago, where I was like out of my mind, stressed out, weeping. I have not been right for like six months. Like, I, 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 anyway, so I have a thyroid appointment coming up on May 2nd, right? So my mom doesn't have a thyroid. My sister does is has Hashimoto. So my mom told me to get Synthroid that the generic doesn't work well. Now here's the thing. I've been on generic for just like ever. I had cancer in 05 and I think I've been on generic for just like, I don't know, decades, like a long time. And over the last number of years, like my, I've had a terrible ache in my muscle in my leg, like bad, like bad ache. Every time I step, I'm like, my God, the, my, the, like my bone hurts. And sleeping. Now recently they gave me a new generic. Okay. A new generic, new bottle, new everything. And I was like, whatever, six weeks. And I had this ongoing cough. I did not, I could cry at everything or I could be furious and curse you out. Like no patience, just like angry. I didn't feel right. I just didn't feel right. Right. Okay. I have been taking, my mom told me take the brand because my mom and my sister can't have the generic. They're like, take the brand. So I got the brand. I started taking it three days ago and listen to me carefully. It takes weeks to build up in your system. Okay. But just in three days, I am like, the muscle in my leg is like 90% better. And it's been like that for years couple of years now, like three years, two years. I don't even know. And over the last three days, it has stopped aching deep in my bone. My cough is markedly better. I am like, I am so markedly different over even just the last three days, taking the brand name of my medicine instead of the generic that I've been taking for years that I am like, you know, and I just wanted to tell you, sometimes it is a tiny little tweak that God's trying to communicate to you. It could be your medicine is off. It could be you are not sleeping well. You, you know, it could be something small. And I was just like, man, listen, I've been taking the generic for so long. If in the next, and oh, oh, and since they switched me to that generic six weeks ago, I've gained like 15 pounds. You know, I lost a bunch of weight and I'm still losing, right? 
So I, in the last three days, I've lost two pounds just being on the Synthroid. So I really think being on the generic has not been good for me. But oh my gosh, I didn't even know. And I'm excited to see just how much better I'm supposed to be feeling. You know, you don't even know how you're supposed to feel because you've just felt bad for so long that it's your normal. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I do. I just feel like people, this is just how people, is this how people just feel? I don't know. And then you realize you're not actually supposed to be feeling like that. <laughs> and you're like, huh, interesting. Anyway, that's me. I love you like a crazy person. I hope that you guys are good. Pray for me as I pray for you. Be good to one another. Don't forget you're one of the one another's. Don't forget to be good to yourself. I love you, and I mean it, peanut. Mwah.